that. Um, <laughs> again, it's extremely hard to prove. <laughs> it's extremely hard to prove. Yes. But when I can get somebody fully qualified and in a home in 30 days with oh. another very high-ranking institution and – this one, they didn't, and they got car loans and credit cards and all that sure. kind of stuff to keep them in debt. It's To me, it's a problem. And the person who told me this used to work at one of these branches. So I was like, wow. I mean, it was really yeah. hard to hear. Wow. It was really wow. hard to hear. And it's really unfortunate because a lot of people, you know, um, feel like, I'm just going to go to the place. I already bank here. We already have a relationship. And I have to say to them, you can try that, and that's okay, but do know that those institutions have highly disappointed people either at the beginning of the process or close uh, or at the middle of the process where they say yes, and then they say no, and then they turn around and the underwriter yeah. looks at it and says no. no. So right. I really don't want you to be in that situation. And it takes a minute because they're like, mm, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I, I'm glad you all brought that point out so for example and i know you all are very thorough about screening your your clients because no one wants to waste their time because time is money but when you have a client that they have and i'll just call from from a personnel perspective when they have the minimum quals so they have the the 700 credit score they the debt ratios are looking good and they have the money in the bank and you get that rejection from the bank what alternative do your clients have at that point when it's just obvious that there's nothing, you know what I mean? You, you're looking at the credit report from whatever bureau you are using. Uh, all that's looking good. The money's there. The, 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 the employment history is there. What, what do you do as the real estate agent for that client? Well, long story short, because there's two ways. One is the issue if they want to address it later, which I'm not going to talk about that right at this moment. Sure. And the other one is if they're looking to buy right away. I always tell clients, too, you make them work for your business. So sometimes it's not even, let's just say they're not trying to discriminate. You make that lender work for your business. So you can have your credit ran three, up to three to four times in 30 days and it not affect your credit score. So okay. you want to shop for the best interest rate. You want to shop. <laughs> you want them to, you want, like I say, you want them to earn your business. So let's just say if you are declined, then you would definitely want to reach out and find another lender that is going to qualify them. And then after that's done and you found your property or whatever, and I'm a, like I said, you got to start, you know, we got to start reporting stuff. A lot of times we don't want to be bothered with it and we just kind of let it go. Then you can follow a report. You can follow, you can, you can definitely follow a report against that um, financial institution that declined you. And two, they usually, when they do deny you a loan, no matter what type of loan it is, um, they send you a little uh, disclosure. And at the bottom, it says that you could get more detailed information. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to find out what was the exact reason why they denied you that bank loan. But hmm. don't let that stop you from getting your house. So that's why I said there's two different issues because you don't want to be fighting that. And now, because interest rates change on a daily basis and you're missing op you're missing the big prize, which is you want to purchase a home, which is something that, you know, I, I feel like every family should want to do, every person should want to do um, at least one time in their life. And then after they do that, then, like I said, you go and you file a report against that financial institution and you make them prove to why they denied you that loan. And even with a higher interest rate. So if you're getting a really low interest rate and then another company wants to give you two points higher, two and a half points higher, find out, too, because, you know, they'll do that as well. They might approve you for the loan, but they'll prove you the loan for a higher interest rate. OK, well, th this this has been a great discussion and we're, we're going to come back because I know. I know we have more questions and, and thin bed and I want to delve a little deeper into this, this whole issue and then just kind of talk about, I know it's two different things, but just kind of talk about how this sort of relates to that whole gentrification piece that, um, that gets people so bent out of shape uh, when, when they are looking at certain neighborhoods. So let's, um, let's think about some, some things that we want to talk about and of course, we want to keep this redlining discussion going on and, and move into gentrification. So, so keep it locked. We'll be right back. Real talk, straight, no G. 
Chaser. We'll be right back. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well, if that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes. You realized them. The path to happiness is not the easy one. But taking drugs will not make it easier. Many people got lost and end up losing their life to drugs. If you or anyone that you know is within that path, don't be afraid to seek for help. Visit www.adk.gov.my for information related to drug abuse. So, know your path. This message is brought to you by the National Anti-Drugs Agency. to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Where I wanted to quit in the back of my mind, I told myself I have to quit. And just that day when I reached for that cigarette, I'll never forget it, with my son looking at me. And it was like a bolt of lightning hit me where I finally realized the big picture of what year after year and cigarette after cigarette had done. And I said, that's it. I'm done. I quit. Took a, a whole pack, brand new pack. Took a germ out the window, and I don't litter. But I was, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I know it's going to kill me. It's going to be cancer. If I don't have to make it sooner than it needs to be. He, he was shocked, and he said, I really hope. You need that mom. Let's get back to your girl Aunt BZ, Thin Bad, and the Chief.
All right, all right, folks. We are back from the break. We are back from the break. We've been talking about uh, buying homes. We're talking about redlining. You know, uh, and we're now kind of sliding into the to the gentrification piece. But buying a home is a huge part of the American dream. But for some folks, it's been kind of a, a nightmarish situation. So let's let's review. What well, what do we have to do? You work hard. You you save your money. You, you, you keep a decent credit score. You got a steady job. You, you qualify for a home only to be told that they're no longer building or we can't get your lot until star date 3150 <laughs> uh, or some other crazy, crazy time. But but those types of actions, you know, may indicate what used to be called redlining. So they may, they may not use the term anymore. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. The, the federal government passed a ton of laws outlawing housing discrimination, but it still occurs. But sometimes the tactics are, are subtle, but, but other times they are more blatant. But regardless of how they are presented, it's illegal and it's got to be stopped. So we've got two great guests here who, if you're just joining us, um, uh, Trina Marie uh, okay. on both sides of the, of the of the country here. So we got Trina Marie over in in Nevada, and we've got Yvitra over uh, uh, on the East Coast uh, over here, who've been helping us out and uh, kind of walking us through this situation as they live this day to day and and deal with it and and have to maneuver and and at the same time help folks and make a living, you know, trying to make sure that we get folks who deserve uh, and who have worked really hard for yes. uh, uh, housing and, and things that they want to be able to get it. So I want to thank you all for, for doing what you do for folks and making, you know, making families happy where you can and calling out uh, the PS <laughs> where, you, where you see it. And, and, and still, I know it's a tightrope, too. I know you can't, it, it can't be such a... Um, you you can't be so rah rah, you know, yeah, no. banging down the door at all. But uh, but you've got to you've got to make sure that um, um, you have a perspective that we need um, because certain things that we we feel or think we can't always be sure of. But because you are living it day to day, um, you know, and some of the, you've seen some of the most egregious things, but you've seen, you know, I'm sure there's some decent stories too. You know, some some people who have who have overcome uh, some of this stuff. And that's kind of what I kind of wanted to start with um, uh, as we go into this half. So when people meet these, you know, they, it takes so long for folks sometimes to get all of their ducks in a row. And once they get everything set and they go and they think they can't be defeated and they run into something like this, and all of a sudden all the wind comes out of the sail uh, and they just feel so defeated by this. What, do you run into this? Um, I'm sure you do run into it, but but how do you combat that? How do you get people to come come back in the game um, uh, if they've experienced, you know, because I'm sure there may be some listeners that we have who may be going through this thing right now or may be in the process of trying to purchase a home. And if they run up on something like this, how do they how do they, you know, move through this 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 possibility? So for me, um, I really start the conversation with um, my clients with, I need you to have patience with the process and, and faith that this is going to, you've already come this far. So now, you know, let's stay in the game. Let's stay in the game. And so sometimes, though, um, they get so deflated, they just kind of go dark on you, right? Not answering calls, not answering, right. okay. um, you know, your, your texts. They just kind of go dark. And in those cases, all you can do is just like, you know, just send send encouraging like texts or, or messages. Um, but what I tell the clients going in, especially those who want to start with the institutions that they currently bank with, I, I tell them, okay, you can start there, but do know that I have a host of lenders that I work with that I know if it can get done, we'll get it done. So don't let, you know, one roadblock stop you from um, going after what you have already set your intention to do. And 